Hello and welcome to my channel. If you have not subscribed yet, hit subscribe and notification icon now to never miss out on our new videos. Which firm created the innovation of selling books online? Amazon? Wrong. Amazon is just one example of a common misconception about innovative firms, that you have to be the first to enter a new market to profit from it. In truth, the innovators who introduce fundamentally new products and create radically new markets are not the firms that profit. Instead, organizations that consolidate the innovations and scale them up are the ones who make the money. History and memory combine to fool the mind. People forget the individuals who created cars and failed before Henry Ford found ways to bring them to market. In Fast Second, published by Jossie Bass, professor of strategic leadership Konstantinos Markitas and former economics professor Paul A. Jaroski face a curious challenge. They have a lot of data to support their claim that the way to make big profits is to be the second company to take an innovation to market. However, the myth of the first mover is pervasive enough that they have to spend a lot of time convincingly debunking it. Generally, innovations take one of four forms. Incremental innovations involve minor, small improvements made to a known product. Major innovations are larger variations made to a known product. Strategic innovations are relatively minor changes, but ones that destroy existing markets. And radical innovations are major changes that fundamentally disrupt your understanding of your business and your product. Radical innovations share some dangerous traits. First, their development path zigzags because new products emerge from basic research and production, not from customer demand. Second, radical innovations involve many specialists, each working on different elements of the emerging technology alone and for their own ends. They often don't even know they are part of a generalized revolution because radical innovations pass through a lengthy gestation process during which you can't tell that anything is happening. After that, the innovation emerges, often explosively, disrupting the surrounding market and spreading through the value chain. Customers have to figure out what to do with these innovations. Competitors have to decide if the innovation is a real change or just a fad, how and when to change to adapt to it, and what these changes will cost. This supply push of innovation creates a situation completely distinct from a demand-pull market in which consumers know exactly what they want and demand it. You can target your efforts in such markets, but a supply push situation creates niche markets where a minority of specialized users will use the new product, but most consumers won't. You're essentially guessing where a supply push market will go. For example, it's hard to anticipate how new technologies will match consumer desire. As a result, when a new innovation emerges, a lot of firms rush into the field. In the early 20th century, more than 1,000 firms tried their luck in the American auto market, offering extensive variety right down to cars with three wheels. However, these firms disappeared. During a market's early years, competing firms learn from each other, trying to figure out what works best in the face of sudden changes. Most new entrants fail quickly and leave the field during the consolidation phase of the market. This passage is marked by the emergence of a dominant design, which creates mass marketing. If you can establish it first, you will be well-placed to take control of the market because you can exploit learning curves and economies of scale and build a brand. Two kinds of firms enter new markets, colonists and consolidators. Colonizing companies are at ease with change, willing to experiment and enthusiastic about the core technology driving their pet innovation. They want to be first or best and don't emphasize money or consumers. By contrast, consolidators establish or build on the dominant design. They move more slowly and are not as flexible. They focus on market realities, listen to customers, and can persuade entire marketplaces of the value of their product. Where colonists wanted to create the best item, consolidators want to make a good enough item that is cheap enough to sell to everyone. Colonizers and consolidators' cultures differ even more than their functions. Colonists like their firms to be small and agile. They prefer flat organizational structures and emphasize generating new concepts without rigidity about finances. Consolidators work best replicating known successes. They prefer a defined hierarchy and tightly control their processes and costs. If you try to be both a colonist and a consolidator, your organization can get stuck. You have other options, though. For example, if you know as an established consolidator that you're unlikely to innovate radically, 
you can outsource that function. In 2003, Procter & Gamble committed itself to drawing half of its innovation from outside sources. When colonists try to improve new products, they risk devising innovations that surpass what consumers need and the price the market is likely to pay. To shift to the consolidation phase, try to identify the average consumer's needs and meet them more cheaply. However, economies of scale only fully come into play when people regard your design as dominant and adopt it. Hence, dominance is your goal. Many people cherish the idea of being a first mover, partly due to the understandable fear of arriving too late to seize an opportunity and forever playing catch up. However, falling into the second mover position isn't the only alternative to being a first mover. Instead of being a radical innovator who creates a market but doesn't benefit from it because there's too much risk and cost, or being a second mover who follows along gathering crumbs, follow a fast second strategy. With this tactic, the second mover waits for just the right moment. Closely track the competition for a dominant design so you enter the market as the platform crystallizes. Often, speedy second movers are well established in related fields and poised to move. Other imitative entrants just copy the emergent designs. They offer lower prices or some product variation. Timing is essential. To enter the market at just the right time, watch the rate of innovation. Experimentation slows as a dominant design emerges. When the public treats the market with more legitimacy, it's time to move on. When complementary goods producers start to emerge, that's a sign that the colonizing period is over and that it's time to move in and consolidate. Thank you for watching. If like this video, subscribe and click on the notification icon to never miss out on new videos. Follow me on Instagram. Link in the description. Thank you.